Hello everyone, how you all doing? Welcome to another video. So I just finished attending this conference called Hope Hackers on Planet Earth. It was a nine day conference, uh, not very common, but they decided to use this format because of uh, COVID. And there were a lot of talks in it and uh, a lot of stuff was very interesting. And I thought I could uh, do a video uh, going through most of the talks and explaining a little bit what each stuff is, what might interest some of the people. So if you're interested in uh, what happens on these hacker conferences, all kinds of different uh, subjects that usually are covered uh, on things, I will go through the talks and give you a little bit of a... Um, heads up to what it was more worthwhile checking out so you can see that it's since it's nine days worth of stuff there are really a lot of them everything is archived at archive.org slash detail slash hopeconf2020 also if you go to the hope.net website there's a link there to this page so it's easy to find it's also on youtube i believe Anyways, uh, starting from the first day opening ceremony i guess it's interesting but not really um, that mind-blowing uh, the first thing that really struck me as very interesting was a keynote by Cory Doctorow. If you don't know, Cory Doctorow is a very uh, strong activist. He's also a writer, a journalist of some sort. Um, I mostly know him as a writer. I have a few of his books. And he's very adamant on user privacy and the future and what is happening with all these things on our political landscape and uh, the right of the consumer to repair their own stuff, uh, to reuse the resale, uh, all kinds of different digital liberties. It's a very strong adamant of that and his keynote was very interesting as well, so I highly recommend it. Uh, boot Genie, I checked it out, was interesting, it was about the boot sector of a computer and people who do games, just to fit the boot sector of a computer. Um, especially if you like assembler language, if you're a programmer in the assembler language, this talk was pretty interesting. Uh, advanced Wi-Fi hacking with $5 microcontrollers was definitely very interesting, especially for all those people who think that it's not really worth to protect your... Uh, your Wi-Fi uh, router properly. Uh, this shows you how you can easily uh, do things and attack things with a very cheap microcontroller that is pretty much available on any IoT device that is out there. Um, I highly recommend checking this talk. Um, a portal to Tesla's Wondercliffs lab was also very interesting, especially if you're into Tesla and all the lore behind him. Uh, they talk about some tunnels that they found in, 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 in Tesla's, uh, Tesla's laboratory and all uh, conspiracies there are behind it. Some might be true, some might be not. But if you are interested in Tesla's uh, story, this was definitely uh, cool to, to check out. Hackers Got Talent was interesting to see Jason Scott trying to salvage something that people weren't really into participating. It was a lot of fun to watch. Not sure if it's uh, replayable without being there actively participating and chatting with other people but uh, it was really fun to to watch uh demo scene was this four hour long show that inverse face put up together as you should know if you're a member of this uh channel i am a demo senior active demo senior i was there in the chat uh talking about um, well answering questions and uh, adding additional information to what inverse face was uh, talking i was there for most of the time well, it was a nice evening spent talking about demo scene to hacker folks. They were all, uh, pretty much interested in in the stuff, so it was it was cool. Um, I missed most of these talks, so I'm not gonna talk about them. Uh, finding ways to fight against stalkers online seems uh, reasonable if you are uh, weary of privacy against uh, stalkers. It was mostly about um, using applications to follow other people um, that can be. Uh, used maliciously so it's it's nice to bring awareness to to that problem uh, efa is a subgroup of eff uh, talking about uh, i think it's electronic frontier alliance so different groups that work uh, grassroots which means with the local communities to try to improve them technically and um not just technically, not just bringing uh, technical education to local communities, but trying to find value out of things and trying to help them uh, 
resolve problems that otherwise without people with high technical skills they wouldn't be able to fix something like that and they it's pretty much a panel where each different organization explains what they went through and what they are active on and how people can contribute so it's good to have ideas of things you can do on your own local community and at the same time uh, learn from other people's experiences of what happens uh, I don't really remember Richard Thiem's uh, keynote, but I think it was interesting. Uh, librarians and crisis response was also interesting. Uh, librarians in the U.S. Uh, tend to have maker spaces associated to them or tend to have more community involvement than we are used to, at least from my experience in Portugal, uh, from Europe. Um, and this was a tale from a specific library and how they managed to respond during the COVID series. They found um, a university that had some 3D printers and they figured out a way to use the library space to put those 3D printers working in producing uh, masks and uh, front panel masks, I think it's called, to help first responders to, uh, to uh, our front responders to the COVID pandemic. How your mobile phone is tracking you. It's about privacy on, uh, on phones. Election system... Um, uh, it was about the the weird election system on the U.S. Um, I believe was uh, focused on um, electronic voting and how electronic voting is the best option that we have right now. I actually know it's the worst option that we have right now because there is no uh, s validation certification that what you did actually valid there's no follow-up no paper trail that you can verify what happens so um considering the pandemic response uh, people have been suggesting that we should be voting electronic and hackers are uh and, and a lot of people against these kind of uh invasions of uh it's not reliability, but certifiability are very against using the electronic system uh, as it is right now on the US specifically. So they advocate for uh, paper voting or in case of not being able or people not being able to leave the house due to the pandemic that you should mail in through uh, through your um through your postal service and then receive some sort of uh, confirmation that they got your vote. Um, and the funny thing about this talk is that it's given by a 12-year-old girl who is very activist in the hacker scene and trying to promote uh, other girls and kids in general to, you know, be open-minded and learn to hack early on and uh, program and that kind of stuff. What kind of things you can do uh, to make your own web page, secure a web page. And in this case, she's also interested in the election system. So it was very funny to to see her enthusiasm and uh, I hope it, it helps uh, motivate uh, other young people and also old people to, you know, get more involved in hacking. You don't need to be an expert programmer to be able to hack some stuff or have a voice or have or raise concerns about certain situations. Anatomy of an accidental honeypot was also a very interesting uh, talk, was about um, uh, one of the first people who got a first name, last name account on Gmail, which is very often mistaken by another person with a similar first name, last name. So she ends up receiving a lot of emails for other people and she pretty much goes through all the issues that that raises in terms of privacy uh, so you should be more careful when you send a mail that you're actually sending it to the correct person and uh, avoid getting a mail that you can easily um, uh, mistake yourself or send it to another person and also you should be aware that uh, some people create these kind of accounts very similar to other mails to try to get wrong mails sent to them so always be careful of when you to what email they're actually mailing you know don't don't assume that it's that it's um reaching the person you're trying to reach just because you started typing the email and it auto-completed somehow. Um, wondering to surveil the mall was also very interesting. You talked about uh, Amazon Ring, which is this thing that you put in your front door, for a product from Amazon, which is a camera surveillance. And it's not only a camera surveillance system, but it's connected to the internet. What could possibly go wrong? And uh, they use it to have like this sort of a community thing around your neighborhood uh, where you can say okay so i just saw 
uh, someone have a suspicious behavior in front of me. So everyone in a certain radius will know of that suspicious behavior and be able to see what you saw on your camera. But it can be easily abused. Uh, uh, and it's also apparently being sold to uh, police for them to use to surveil without uh, people's consent. So if you don't want to be caught on camera, you have to start figuring out very long routes to avoid any houses that have these things installed and like people paid to have this on their front door and it's sending their information to third parties and it's not really safe anyone can actually see them uh, the speaker even made a huge map of the whole entire us and all the cameras that he could pick up so it's really scary for for us residents there are also a few of uh, the cameras on the UK being operated there, but they're not uh, for sale or, or at least widely in uh, Europe, which is thankful for, for people like me who live in Europe. Uh, people are not bots was also a very interesting talk. Uh, it was a bit controversial because on the US, people said that a lot of, um, a lot of uh, Trump's support came from botnets, like on Twitter, on social media sites overall, Facebook, Twitter. A lot of people were doing fake accounts and just spamming uh, those kind of uh, media propaganda stuff to try to uh, raise awareness or uh, quiet the dissident voices from, from other stuff. So uh, the speaker here was actually from Europe, and I believe he was German. And in Germany, we had... Uh, uh, the opposite experience where a lot of people complained about this law that was about to get passed a lot of uh, it was made a lot of awareness about this issue a lot of noise on the web a lot of emails got sent to try to explain that this is a very large community that is against this law and it was dismissed for being a botnet sending all this stuff there was even some uh, people who went to the streets and say, I am not a bot. Uh, this was actually um, uh, correct uh, people uprising against a law that doesn't make sense. And uh, this kind of cancel culture that is occurring of people using this technology that cannot be really proven if people are bots or not to uh, dismiss uh, people's intentions and communication and speech online speech on social media so there was a little bit of dissonance between uh, the u.s experience and the european experience european uh, speaker was advocating that bots cannot be proven that they are bots uh, the studies that prove that uh, if you look at them anyone can be easily considered a bot anyone that is decently active um, so uh, they should be dismissed and um, we need to find reliable ways to detect if people are bots, which is not currently possible. So this kind of research should not be accepted and we should not be having um, topics dismissed as being polluted by botnets. And of course, people who are against uh, the separation of uh, UK from Europe, for example, complained a lot about uh, botnet responses on uh, social media. Some conspiracy theorists even say that it was uh, the Russian people that set up a lot of fake botnets to promote their interests and uh, make Trump win and make uh, UK separate from Europe to try to destroy those uh, countries internally, that kind of stuff. So a lot of food for thought there, but at the end of the day, you need to trust the people that you trust on your network don't don't take random person's word as truth you know you need to fact check anyways uh backseat web driving via browser automation was also very interesting um it was more about automating processes when you are running stuff on the web uh, but it had a few interesting uh, details there that I really enjoyed. Sex work as artic practice, artistic practice was also quite interesting. It's the story of a semi-sex worker. It's not a sex worker in the terms that it's like a prostitute, but she still does work involved with sex and stripping and different sex model kind of kind of stuff. And she ended up being an artist. And. Uh, it's a bit of a mix of both. She's a sex worker and an artist at the same time. And this was telling her experience. It was very interesting from both to know about more about 
the struggles that sex workers are in not being recognized as a proper work and uh, the feeling of uh, imposter syndrome of not really being a sex worker, not really being an artist, what she is and her story behind that. I was I, I found it really uh, interesting. Uh, I don't really remember a new techno communication style. This was a video. Go on to her. Didn't see that. Solar Punk, Cyberpunk. I tried to watch it, but I missed most of it. But I'm more interested in Solar Punk because it's a style that I don't really know. Uh, from the little that I watched of the talk, uh, Solar Punk is more about being optimistic about the future and creating communities to solve problems, avoid the dystopian future that is mo usually portrayed in Cyberpunk. And, um, and yeah, I think the author was advocating that we should be more positive instead of dystopian that uh, cyberpunk is interesting but we should try to show positive ways to do things and uh before reaching the breaking point and not after the breaking point so uh that was interesting talk in that regard um um, let's see what else. I don't really remember Jaron Lenia's keynote. Uh, I missed most of the lightning talks, so I can't really talk about them. Um, OSINT of facilities of fix uh, by physical reconnaissance was very interesting. It's not the kind of talk you expect. This talks about when you look at the building from outside you recognize where things are, like where the air ducts are, where the the stairs are, where the elevator shaft is. And from that, you can detect or learn or infer some things that might allow you easier access to the building. So it was very in-depth talk, talking about all different kinds of buildings, what you can learn, what you can't learn. And uh, was very interesting. It's you you start ending up looking at buildings in a different way. Like instead of just looking at videos and see at buildings and seeing a facade, you start imagining what it's like inside from what you see on the outside. So a very interesting uh, talk. How to hack your way in a comedy show uh, was actually about putting arguments into Google search queries and other search engines that exist out, exist out there. Most people don't know. You don't just type search you can customize what you are actually searching you can narrow it down to being only search on this specific domain or only search uh, if it contains this specific part of text a lot of different arguments that you can use to do very refined kind of search and um, you can abuse it in some ways in this case he uh, ended up winning this competition which was trying to find the location of a secret uh, website and he just searched for it the right way uh, and other people were actually trying to figure out a crypto message on how where it could possibly be so uh, interesting uh, talk if you're into web browsing and searching for stuff and uh, searching for hidden stuff uh, as well they talk about uh, shodan and another website that i don't remember the name anymore that uses that is used to search um iot devices and that kind of stuff uh, stuff that is not that does not have a proper domain name but you can still access it and it might be unprotected uh, some stuff that should be private but is often public on the internet hacking enigma the real story was really interesting talk about the enigma it was uh, given by uh, uh, a person who did a lot of years they run the museum of enigma uh, and uh, i i didn't know that Enigma was originally uh, cracked by Polish guys. I thought it was uh, cracked by Turing, like most people do. But apparently the Polish guys had cracked Enigma before and then they were invaded by Germany. Despite having cracked Enigma, they couldn't hold uh, Germans' invasion uh, uh, on, on the World War. And they ended up defecting to England and gave their information to Turing. And it helped Turing a lot to build the machine that he would end up uh, building that would uh, help turn the war uh, in England's and the Allies' uh, side. So very interesting talk. I really, uh, really learned a few things. Um, uh, let's see other stuff. Uh, history of social engineering is also pretty interesting. Weaknesses in security testing. It's more about pen testing and that kind of stuff. Um, empathy, equity, and sex tech at the margins was also a bit of a controversial uh, talk. Um, 
um, because it was a sex worker person and um, talking about rights and how we can reach uh, equity in terms of tech. So how we can put more people of uh, different color, different uh, sex uh, affiliations, how you can do uh, work for them. And usually what happens is that, uh, you know, the, the cis white male uh, is the, you know, 80% of the developers out there of applications. And that's who develops. And uh, they were advocating that you need people of uh, the actual target background to be involved in the process to be able to develop proper tools for them to use. Um, and it ended up being controversial by other reasons, and I think I'm going to skip that part, and you can watch the talk and draw your own conclusions if you want. Uh, let's have a board level talk. It was really interesting talk if you are looking for boards, PCB boards of different kinds, uh, what kind exists, what are the limitations, what are the benefits of each one. I'm not really a hardware kind of person. I only have a couple of Arduinos and a few things, but this was a really interesting talk if you want to get more into that kind of thing. Uh, I missed hacking ISO shipping container corner. This might be interesting. Uh, missed this, missed this. Not sure what that is. Yeah, I missed most of this uh, day's talks. Make them more secure and faster using open standards. I also missed this. Mm, on doing good enough. I saw this one, but I don't really remember what it is anymore. I think it was about Edward Schwartz and uh, the other guy that works at archive.org. So it was actually interesting. It was about trying to find what you want to do. And trying to find something that you find meaningful to do. So you don't just end up working your 9 to 5 that you hate but try to actually uh, find what you are interested in and don't be afraid to step up and try to do it and find a community of people that will help you go in that direction. So it was actually a very good talk. Um, not necessarily hacking, but hacktivism related to things. Hackers and the arms race for privacy. I guess it's about privacy. I don't really remember. Um, Cyrillic IDN was talking about uh, the Cyrillic um, domain name that showed up in uh, Russia and how they had like a whole system to try to promote it and get Russian people to use internet more, pretty much. Um, oh, first until I don't really remember. Hacking fake news was really good. Was about fact checking pretty much, and how important fact-checking is, and I can't stress this enough, it's really important, because nowadays, as we already talked about on the previous uh, talk about uh, social media bots, we have a lot of um, people repeating in echo chamber what uh, other people say, and um, a lot of uh, racist stuff, a lot of political dubious stuff, and uh, you end up a lot of uh, you end up not really knowing if a lot of people that are saying that are real accounts or if there are fake accounts. And also a lot of times fake news happened and not just fake news as Trump calls fake news uh, to pretend that they are fake, but actually fake stuff like you create an image, you put a caption underneath it. It's just a meme, but people spam it on the social network and other people believe it as truth. How do you distinguish from that? How do you are more resilient, that kind of attack? And uh, there are some fact-checking groups out there that actually do that kind of work. And uh, it can be hard, but it's, it's important work. And actually, there was another very important talk about the same kind of thing, which was on the previous day, which now I wonder if I skipped. Was it a history of social engineering? I'm not sure. Maybe it was a history of social engineering. It was about a library. A library doing some work. Mm, not sure if it's this one. It was another very important talk about uh, this uh, librarian work doing some semantic uh, language search uh, to also do fact checking in the end. Uh, shit, I don't know. I don't know which one it was the, one of the later talks. A new techno communication style? Yes, that was it. A new techno communication style. 
had this old retro wave feeling to it and it was very important talk and very important work so i highly recommend this talk as well not just because of the fact checking part behind it but also for all the work that that uh, library group is doing uh, to um, promote this kind of discussion it wasn't that's that's why they call a new techno communication style they weren't fact checking to say you were wrong you were right they were just uh accumulating all the the questions and doubts around the system around a certain question a certain topic and they would break it down into exact questions and find scientific um, context for each one of them that would present you the facts so you would if you're interested in this topic you could just go to this page you have a list of the most uh, asked questions surrounding this topic and exact facts corresponding to that it doesn't give any conclusion it's up to you to have a conclusion it presents facts so uh this one in particular was about climate change but they they have a system that can be applied to other topics and that's the kind of work that they are doing fortunately it takes a lot of work to have this site built up so it's not something that just happens overnight it takes months to set this up but i think it's very important especially in questions that keep happening over and over again and you are still debating them 20 years later it's really good to have a place where you can go and figure out why are we still talking about climate change what are the new things that came out recently that might change my idea about it that kind of thing so it was really important talk and i really liked it uh, and i i applaud their work um on on the on that topic uh, let's see what else. What else? We else we else. Um, how much food coloring can your robot handling? I'm not sure. I remember this one. For emotion, pulling friends, DIY learning, good hacking cancer, maker spaces hacking spacing. I think I missed most of these. Well, I all usually on the beginning of the day I didn't really catch that much. Um, Saving hacking from the Zaibatsus. This was pretty interesting talk on the Fediverse, which is um, think social networks, uh, but not being constrained to a single big company, which is what Zaibatsu means. It's like this big corporation that cannot be touched or destroyed or argued uh, against. Um, so what happens is there are a few people who try to make... Uh, an alternative to Twitter, alternative to Facebook, alternative to YouTube. So you can post your comment and talk to other people without being fear, without having fear of being uh, censored, of having adverts, of people selling your data uh, without you being aware. So this, this is a lot uh, better and it's not fixed to one single structure. It's like a peer-to-peer -peer kind of thing or multi-server kind of thing where uh, you talk to each server talks to other servers and they relay communication around so uh, it was very interesting to to hear about it and the background behind it and how people can start adopting it uh, more we need to talk about amazon it was also a very interesting talk by this uh, austrian uh, activist collective and uh, bringing a lot of interesting topic uh, points about amazon and why we still use amazon despite all the evil that is known for it to do inside job exploding alarm systems talks about how you can explore alarm systems like making them uh, ring out uh, or that kind of thing or um Usually there's a central place for the alarm system. So you can either hack the alarm itself or you can hack the the alarm central. Um, and the idea is that you have you try to get access to the place without being detected, either by the alarm or by the central. So there are a lot of social engineering ways that you can do about it and physical ways that you can do about it. And they talk a little bit about uh, that. So you can, if you use alarms, you know how to prevent against that. And if you don't use alarms and want to go into a place by reasons that might probably be illegal, do you have a certain knowledge of how you can do that? Uh, please don't rob places because of the stock. Uh, brain backups was also very interesting. Uh, was about how you can download your entire brain into data. And then eventually, at some point in the future, we will be able to have a working brain replica. 
that would be really great to have. Will it be possible within our lifetime? Probably not, but it's it's a nice way to have like a backup of your brain. It feels like uh, you might be able to live forever. When I was young and starting to write uh, science fiction, this was one of the concepts that I really loved about artificial intelligence. It's how you can you could download your entire brain and have a copy of yourself, you know, to talk with or to imitate you for posterity even after you're dead. Stuff like that. Still not quite uh, there. And it's interesting, he talks about a few ways that you can replicate all of the neuron connectivities you have, but the, the best way to have really accurate uh, representation is actually highly destructive and uh, can only happen if you are dead because it will be destroying your brain to access all the little details via m a microscope to see all the connections that exist. So uh, that brings a lot of um, of um, of uh, uh, I'm missing the word for it. Ethical, a lot of ethical questions around, and um, I'm 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 always interested in transhumanism and see where things are evolving, but they're evolving very slowly. I don't think we will be having uh, any of that anytime soon. Bildschmir text was about a teletext system that existed in Germany. Very interesting talk. I didn't know about uh, German teletext systems, and uh, now I know. It was really cool. Be kind to the noobs, how you should, uh, you know, try to make people uh, welcome when they join something. Project MF with NPSTN. This was for phone freaker stuff. They are replicating um, old phone systems. Uh, they had recordings of all the old phones that you have, and now they set them up in a fake network of phones that you can dial around and re-listen to all the sounds from the old days. Um, how Asian Makers Unite During COVID-19 was about uh, makerspaces in uh, Asia in particular, from Thailand, Japan and China, how they responded to COVID-19, producing masks, producing uh, scrubs, all kinds of different stuff. Um, we had similar thing in Portugal, so it was very interesting to see how makers uh, got together and uh, fought, fought the pandemic and how the makerspaces evolved or sustain themselves during the social distancing, isolation, that kind of stuff. Hackers in the post Roe versus Wade world was also important. I don't remember what post what Roe versus Wade is. Oh yes, I remember now. This was about abortion. What happens in the U.S. is that with Trump setting up legislation um, or Trump fueled legislation, they reverted the law to be able to have abortion in some uh, states in the US summarily. So um, this talk is about how you can say fuck that shit and still have safe health care if you are a pregnant woman who does not want to have a baby. So if you're pro-life, this is not the talk for you. Uh, it was very scary how some people claim to be pro-life and go really out of their way to fuck other people's lives. So uh, that was quite distressful, but, you know, it's USA, whatever, they're crazy. Um, but it was really interesting as well on the, in terms of um, information for people who are, you know, facing this... Uh, hard hardship of trying to get an abortion in a place where it's not legal what they can do and how they can practice how they can help uh, medical people or nurses who want to practice it but can't quite you know order the equipment that they need to do it because otherwise they will be under scrutiny so it uh, was a very interesting talk highly recommend it um and uh, yeah it also has a lot of value for other cultures and countries that also have uh, abortion illegal by some retarded reason. Uh, social engineering for introverts was also interesting. Uh, Radio Wonderland was a person uh, doing some music with a lot of weird gadgets. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, only makers make it possible because of all the weird gadget stuff that he was using. 
uh, pocket organ was about uh, building your own organ device uh, out of an Arduino, I believe. Or a board, I'm sure. I, I only caught glimpses of the talk. Um, what other stuff? Um, Keynote by Tiffany Rad was really cool. She has a really interesting past. Uh, there was some controversy on the chat uh, because her father was a CIA agent, so she might be a CIA agent. And uh, CIA is infiltrating the hackers. Oh my god. A uh, horrible thing, but uh, the talk was really down to earth and she seemed like a great person doing important work. So I highly recommend you check this. Also mentions some, not only her background was awesome to hear about, but also what the current work that she's been doing, uh, making cars safer to hack against also seems uh, quite, quite uh, important. Uh, when cops get hacked, not quite remember what this was. Cube OS is interesting if you're very weary of security. Cube OS is a new uh, operating system similar to Linux, but more privacy oriented. So um, this talks to you, like if, for example, you're handling confidential information, you want to pass it along to someone, you should be using Cube OS to avoid uh, getting any... Um, uh, what's it called? Paper trail? Not paper trail, but electronic trail. So no one can see that you were the person who was that. So this talk explains to you how to set up a cube OS instance, how to use it, how to set up all the network stuff so that you make sure that you are safe and using uh, the OS correctly to do all the secret uh, data handling, transmission, whatever that you want to do or need to do. Uh, it's very important for journalists, but also, you know, if you're handling security stuff, if you're a spy or whatever, this uh, might be an uh, interesting um, operating system for you to use. Uh, fake sounds funny, I don't really remember what it was. Introduction to locksmithing is great if you want to learn how to uh, lockpick, or in this case, do your own locks as well. Uh, do your own keys, actually, not really doing your own locks. Stardust. Stardust was very interesting system. Stardust is about um, a way to do uncentralized rating of other people's learning. It was mostly used uh, to rate documentation of other people in a makerspace, but it can be applied to also teaching. And, and let me explain the system summarily, and then you will hopefully understand a bit better what I'm talking about. So. The system was, you just do a piece of document and you certify it. And someone else can vote if that's if that piece of document seems really good or really bad. Seems easy. Then someone else can do something derivative from that. If you teach someone something, like for example, I'm doing this video and I teach someone to uh, do videos. And uh, the other person will do a video about uh, what I taught them, but adding their own spark. So... Uh, there is this connection between master student between those two certificates and if the master votes it uh, higher or lower it will uh, affect the value of the other people's certificate and uh, vice versa if other people vote on the students um, certificates it will affect the value of the master so it promotes uh, everyone try to uphold a certain le level of quality because if I see that my student is doing something that is crappy, I'm going to say, okay, that's going to reflect badly on me. So can you, I can give him feedback. Can you improve this, this and that? I think it will make much better uh, experience. And uh, that's, that's, that's the concept behind it and trying to let it expand and use that as a way to promote people documenting their stuff more and uh, trading knowledge in a way that feels like they are giving something back and receiving something back that feels not as ethereal so you don't have to pay money for for something you can just you know do do a certificate that proves that you know that stuff also they say that the best way of learning something is to teach something so this goes very aligned with that kind of concept and i really wonder how it can evolve especially on small communities. And I think maker spaces are really cool places to test that. And also on places where teachers want the students to interact with each other and explain each other's stuff. This, this system could also work very interestingly. So yeah, it was an interesting system. Um, 
I recommend you to check it out if you're interested in this kind of stuff. Source code to the human mind. I don't really remember what it was anymore. Uh, tribalism is probably about echo chambers kind of thing. Ask a Sex Geek was about sex toys and hacking sex toys and all kind of uh, different sex stuff that exists. Uh, also interesting talk if you enjoy sex stuff. Um, I, I didn't get this talk, but if you're interested in polygraphs, I guess you should check it. Uh, polygraph stats and how to beat them. Um, don't think I saw this. Clairview AI. Uh, both these talks were really important, especially if you are concerned about face recognition. So uh, face recognition has been around for a very long time, but it's been pushed forward and forward ever more. It made more robust with all the developments around neural networks and uh, classification systems that have been uh, happening. And uh, a lot of cameras being put up everywhere for your safety and automatic face recognition because we need to find lost children and catch the bad guys. And you end up being in a database where they know exactly where you are all the time and... Uh, it, it can it can lead to a lot of problems, not just if you have something to hide, but it can also lead to a lot of fel false positives. And it's not being regulated properly. It's just being deployed and people are using it. Police are using it. They're targeting the wrong people because the system thinks that it might be them. So there's not a very deep knowing or learning uh, about the system and it's already being used widely and it's very dangerous to, to, to society. And if you uh, agree or disagree, you should check this talk and try to understand why a lot of people are concerned about this. Uh, Clearview AI, uh, Clearview is the main supplier of uh, face recognition systems in the US right now. There are a few other people who do face recognition companies, I mean. Uh, they're mostly based in China and they're a closed source. Uh, Clearview is a startup which is pretty much open. They scrape the entire Facebook without your permission, all the photos that are public, and they make it available to law enforcement for them to search. So they know exactly um, what to search and have a very large database of photos uh, illegally obtained without your permission to do that kind of stuff. So um, this talk talks about Clearview and uh, all the dangers behind it and what you can do against it and that kind of stuff. Uh, I missed the keynote, so I can't talk much about that. I missed mo most of this. Um... Pricing and mapping the underground economy was also very interesting. Um, it's it's a, pretty much about uh, the dark web and what you can buy on the dark web. Uh, you can buy a lot of different services. Are they reliable? Are they not reliable? How much do they cost? So this uh, person in this company, I believe it's an antivirus company, was doing a lot of research on that. And this talk uh, tells us about his findings. So you don't have to be on the dark web and get scammed to know uh, how things sort of operate. Um, sex, big data, and user autonomy. I know I saw this, but I don't remember what it's about. Pick better fights with your boss was interesting talk. It's about managing your own emotions and trying to not hack your boss, but figure out where they are coming from so you have a better understanding uh, pretty much promoting empathy so don't tell your boss what's good for you tell your boss what's good for him like figure out what metrics he needs to achieve what are his goals uh, so that you can uh, adapt your speech to meet those things so he can understand the value of what you're saying more easily because otherwise you have this back and forth a lot where they understand that it's good for you but they don't really understand if it's really good for the company so you need to try to go towards that and uh, that will help you have a better life with a stupid boss that can't understand what you're talking about when you say it just in your terms uh, the Wonderful World of Cocktail Robotics. This was an awesome talk. Awesome. 
It's about robots that are made to do cocktails. And there's this uh, recurring festival called Robo Exotica in uh, Austria, where a lot of people do robots and show them for three days. And uh, it's really cool. The, the, the presenter was awesome. He presented in a very funny way. And a lot of the robots were just uh, completely... Uh, laughing, uh, interesting, all sorts of stuff. It's really hard to explain, but I really suggest everyone to to check it out. No one can predict the future. I don't really remember what it was about. Intro to game hacking on the NES was about uh, using Game Genie or Game Genie-alike systems to hack games, pretty much. If you're interested in uh, ROM hacking and uh, game hacking, this was a decent talk. Uh, let's see, what else? DJ Spock, I heard this DJ set was good. I didn't see it though, so you can check it out. Ask VFF was a really good panel um, with a lot of people from EFF talking about the different stuff that they work on and EFF does a very important work for digital, uh, digital uh, privacy and digital rights in a lot of different topics. So this was really interesting to to uh, participate in and hear their talks and that kind of stuff. Keynote from Libby Liu, I think I skipped that. I was having lunch or dinner or something like that. Um, signal bots I saw it, but I don't remember what it was about. Fake faces I think was about um, face recognition and trying to poison face recognition to not detect things properly? I think, I'm not sure. Uh, how makers responded to COVID-19, similarly to, to what Asian people uh, did on the talk before. Uh, hackers Got Talent again was pretty good. Cybersecurity and Clown was uh, interesting. Uh, it was like a performance kind of thing. Um, if you're into cybersecurity, that was, uh, it was cool to watch. In the box by Cameron Glass. Cameron Glass was the person who did the music for the conference. Uh, it was just a short talk with him, uh, a little performance and a little short talk on how he did the, the work. Uh, Stop Botting My Babies, how a developer of HBox, I believe, uh, secured HBox against uh, different kind of bots attacking the stuff. Uh, I missed this talk, it seems important though. I saw Polysense, but I don't remember. Oh yeah, it was about uh, e-textile fabrics, uh, how you can uh, use different fabrics with electricity going through them to get different kind of sensors and stuff like that and how you can make them at your home. Interesting for performers and dancers and robotics people who want to know more about that kind of subject. Um, stuff about privacy, I'm not sure what this is about. Last keynote, last nighting talks, I missed most of this. Uh, this one, Zbay and Fang was also interesting. And... Disgusting Secrets of Real Hardware was really cool. I really enjoyed that. Um, mostly about uh, doing electronics, building electronics, like from the ground up, doing your own PCBs, and mistakes learned, and things that you see other people doing wrong, uh, how you can easily exploit that to uh, steal secrets or uh, inject bad code and make uh, electronics do things that they're not supposed to. It was a really interesting talk. Um, and yeah, and the final talk also, the, the closure was also pretty good. Uh, talking about all aspects of Hope, all the systems that they build around it, the people who worked on it, and also um, had a nice video talk by the same person who did the Amazon talk and the uh, robotic cocktail talk and it was very funny and very on point uh security privacy kind of uh, topics uh, mentioned in a, in a funny way um i really liked uh, watching it so i i recommend you guys checking if not for anything else for that part of the video alone so yeah, this was pretty much a talk on its own. 48 minutes, holy shit. So yeah, uh, this was all the stuff that I watched from Hope 2020. Uh, hope, uh, I hope, it hoped <laughs> that uh, uh, it made some interest uh, on you guys. This is the website where you can find the stuff. And uh, you can check all the archive talks. There's a link right here. So, yeah, I really enjoyed Hope 2020. It was a very cool experience to see it live streamed and participate on the chat, meet a lot of different people. Hope you guys enjoyed this video as well and follow up the links to all the stuff. Uh, check the talks, a lot of interesting knowledge embedded in them. See you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care.